I want to give you an introduction to the mechanical energy balance. The mechanical energy balance is written as change in pressure over density plus change in velocity squared over 2 times alpha plus g times delta z plus a friction term is equal to minus the shaft work <coughs> done by the fluid divided by the mass flow rate. In the mechanical energy balance, delta signifies out minus in. If you remember that delta is out minus in, you will get the correct signs for friction and shaft work by. If you mix them up, out minus in, you'll make a sign error on those terms. The mechanical energy balance is useful when you have a single input, single output system steady flow, uh, very close to constant temperature, no reaction, no heat flow, no phase change. The fluid must be incompressible. Under these circumstances, the mechanical energy balance allows us to calculate the friction in a system and the shaft work. In systems where the friction is zero and the shaft work is zero, these three terms remain and are equal to zero and it becomes the Bernoulli equation. The mechanical energy balance can tell us nothing about forces. This F is friction. If we want to know about forces, we don't do an energy balance, we do a momentum balance. A typical system we would use the mechanical energy balance for would be a system where we might have a pump pumping from a tank, maybe up some elevation and then exiting the pipe. In such a system, we have a single input, single output system. The fluid is coming in from the tank, going through the pump, and going out the outside. It is a steady flow if we run the pipe at a steady rate. It has shaft work, so the shaft work goes in by the pump, and there are frictional losses along the way. So when we apply the mechanical energy balance, we write delta P over rho plus delta V squared plus G delta Z plus friction equals work shaft by minus mass flow rate. This term alpha is a parameter that is one for turbulent flow, which is when the Reynolds number is greater than 44,000, and it's equal to a half for laminar flow, which is when the Reynolds number is less than 2100. In between 2100 and 4000, the flow is transitional and it's not clear what this number alpha should be. I'll just do one simple example in this video of how to use the mechanical energy balance. I will do it on this steady flow system shown here but I will do it for the case where the friction is zero. To apply the mechanical energy balance to this system, remember that delta is out minus in. We need two positions, an inlet position and an outlet position. Now we need to apply the mechanical energy balance by evaluating each of the terms for those two positions, the outlet position minus the inlet position. So for our flow now, we need P2, P2 is atmospheric, P1 is also atmospheric, 
So delta P is equal to zero. V2, the average velocity at position two, we don't know what that is. V1, though, is the velocity, the kinetic energy related velocity of this interface. Because the tank is draining very slowly, the velocity is about zero. So V1 will be taken to be zero. Z2 is the elevation of the exit. So if we're doing this problem, let's say this is 50 feet. Z2 would be 50 feet and Z1 would be zero. Relative to the elevation of our surface here, the elevation of the exit is 50 feet. We can now put these into the mechanical energy balance. Uh, we have delta P over rho plus, which is zero, plus V2 squared minus V1 squared, where V1 is zero. We'll assume that in this flow that it's turbulent flow and take alpha equal to one, plus G delta Z, delta Z is 50 feet. We're going to neglect the friction and that will give us work shaft by divided by the mass flow rate. So if we know the Vo the volumetric flow rate, for example, Q, we can calculate the average velocity at position two as Q divided by pi r squared, where this is the radius of the pipe. So if the problem tells us, for instance, that we're pumping at five gallons per minute, we would have Q. We need to know the dimensions of the pipe. We can get the velocity. And so we would know this term, the velocity term. We know gravity. Gravity is 32.174 feet per second squared. So this one we know, this one we know. We assume zero friction and we can calculate the shaft work. So just to recap, the pressure at the inlet and outlet are both atmospheric. The pressure one and pressure two are equal, so the pressure term goes away. V2 is a number we need from the volumetric flow rate. V1 is zero because this surface is not moving very fast. The elevation changes between point two and point one is given in my hypothetical problem. The friction we were told to neglect and we can calculate the shaft work. So for problems of this sort, we need just a few relationships, the mechanical energy balance, and this relationship between flow rate and average velocity.